Hey there, I'm Gazbot, and this is Gazbot's Toy Shot. Well, this is a little bit of a different toy shot. Usually I'm talking about things I've bought or telling you about a toy specifically, but I'm not doing that this time. Uh, I moved somewhat recently. It's been a month and a half or so now. As you can see, a lot of empty walls, not, not a lot of toys, not a lot of posters, still kind of moving in, getting set up, etc. But before I left my old house, I documented it. Documented it video style, and I just took a walk through the house and showed my collection, uh, my wife's collection, stuff on the walls and just sort of like the mini museum that was our old apartment. Maybe one day I'll have a mini museum that is our new house, but right now, as, I, as you can see, it's blank, but the walls that are not blank are to be seen now. That was awkward. Anyway, here it is. Check it out! All right, this is if you were coming into the house, you turn a quick left into the living room and boom, this is where it all begins. We've got Power Ranger slash Super Sentai up here. Got a few of the, the big Zords and the helmet set. Then we start moving down. We have Q's Tiger and Bunny set. These are all SH figure arts. Moving down. More Power Rangers slash Super Sentai. The entire original team uh, with an armored black. And that uh, figure there is not SH figure arts. It's from, I think it was the Legends line, but it blends in. Lord Zed, not so well, but he's in the background. And we got three more Zords down here. Naruto Uzumaki stuff, mostly Shippuden. Uh, these are sort of fixed figure statues with a couple SH figure arts mixed in. Got a little Kakashi there. Moving down again, more Q stuff. We have uh, kind of a hodgepodge. We've got uh, a Kill the Kill statue in the back. We have Fully Klee. We have Sword Art Online. A lot of this is uh, anime stuff, but then right here is from Saga. And then moving down to the bottom shelf is, I think it's all Common Rider. You got the original, you got a Helm replica, and then you have a few of the more recent ones. And this is a mix of SH Figure Arts and the normal Bandai releases you'd see in a store. Right next to it, we have a picture of the Zoo Rangers, which is the Japanese civilians uh, from Power Rangers, essentially. And we met them at Power Morphicon, all except for the gentleman that plays Dan. And we got signatures from all of them. And my favorite signature is this one uh, from the guy who plays Boy. It's hard to see but it's actually a profile picture of his helmet because he is a cartoonist as well. So I thought that was pretty awesome. Uh, and then there's a Tiger and Bunny poster and a Chibi, Rita, and Goldar by an artist whose name I don't remember, but there's the signature right there. We've got the Legacy Saba sword up here. Then moving over here, this is the Transformers case, but there is a bunch of Ranger stuff on top there, including the Dragon Dagger, the Zoo Ranger Morpher, which is signed by the gentleman who played Geki the Red Ranger, a few other things mixed in with the Transformers. And then as we move down, I will open these doors. And this is a Billy cabinet uh, we got at Ikea. Most of our furniture we got at Ikea. And then put some, I don't know, strip lighting, whatever you call that, but I got that at Home Depot or Lowe's. The top shelf here is all modern era stuff. It's all G1 characters. I primarily collect G1 characters, but I am fine with the modern versions. So you can see uh, that Fort uh, that Metroplex at the time was the largest Transformer ever built, taking the title, I think, from the original Fort Max. That's the new Fort Max. I think he might have taken the title back. I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, and then here, a bunch of the other modern versions of G1 characters. This shelf, a little bit darker, this is all actual G1, with the exception of this, which is Fortress Maximus. It is G1, but it's a reproduction, like anniversary edition. All the rest is from G1. And you can see there's the original Metroplex versus the modern one. It's gigantic. I mean, that was big for the time, and then they just kept getting bigger. Whatever, you get it. All right, so down on the bottom shelves, we're back into modern. Uh, these are modern, but not some of them are not as new as the ones up top there. Like, for example, this Jazz is probably from 2000-something at this point. So they're all, you know, modern in that sense, but some of them are already 10 years old. And again, mostly G1. There's a few um, from Transformers Prime because I like that series very much. So I got a little sub-collection here. I forget this guy's name. He's a repaint of Skids. Uh, I think he's in the comics. I just thought he was a cool figure, so I kind of broke my own rule about getting him. Similarly with Chroma. And then down at the bottom shelf, this is a mix of G1 and Modern. It's mostly G1. Uh, this Predaking, again, is G1, but it's the re-release, so it's gold instead of um, yellow. That Omega Supreme and that Devastator are originals, but they both have third-party parts to make them a little bit taller or better in various ways. And then you got a bunch of G1 characters up here, and Sky Shadow, and a Sideswipe, who's from Animated. Again, these are kind of outliers from my normal collection. On the way over to the next cabinets, you can see I have Titan's Return Blaster, and I forget if that's Rewind or Eject, I mix up their names, and Hot Rod. I, I like the car version better than the 
robot version. I've yet to find a version I really like of that character, which is Bummer, because he's one of my favorites. Kaida poster, Street Fighter versus Tekken poster, Street Fighter 2 marquee from a, a arcade cabinet. This is a reproduction of an Alex Ross Ultraman painting that was done for a DVD release in Japan. Uh, it's a bootleg of some sort because they never sold them, and the few times I've seen originals, they go for hundreds of dollars, and that isn't even that common. Here's a Yang Cat poster uh, that is Q's. Oh, I skipped over here. I got Space Godzilla poster. Uh, this is Ultraman, ooh, I forget, Gaia? Dinah. I think it's, no, Tiga. Maybe it's Tiga. One I haven't watched, but I loved how big it was, and it was super cheap, so I grabbed it, despite not remembering his name. I think it's Tiga. Uh, up here, I have a few extra things. We got the Build-A-Figure Titus, the Build-A-Figure Space Venom from Marvel Legends. This is the Gabu Revolver from uh, Q-Ranger, Q which is Dino Charge. And then uh, Marvel Legends Spider-Man 2099, but that's the older one. Uh, I think it was still Toy, Bu Toy Biz. And then this is Q's Sailor Moon SH figure art shelf. Two of them, you can see she put little fake flowers and stuff. And then down here, this is mostly her stuff. I think there's one or two figures I put in here, but this is the Dino Charge uh, shelf. As you can see, she even labeled it. Uh, and it's got pretty much all the characters. I think there's one Ranger that's not in there, but we do own him. Uh, and then finally, they came out with Poissandra, which was nice. And you can see her case, she had it painted. Like she did this herself. We bought it from Ikea and she customized it. Similarly with this one, I did black and white because this is my Star Wars case. Mostly black series from Hasbro. That is a Moffex. That is a Moffex. That's movie my sh me show realization where he's like a samurai. Um, that's Moffex. I, I pointed to that one, but I meant that one. Uh, the rest of these are all black series except for this one is SH Figure Arts because Luke is my favorite. Um, and mostly I tried to collect Force... Uh, Force Unleashed, uh, Force Awakens, and Rogue One, and not so much G1 characters. Uh, and the top shelf does reflect that, but I have uh, Stormtrooper Luke hiding in the back there, and I have another Luke, and Luke is sort of a mini collection of mine, and then a few other figures, like I got Rebels, and then this was an exclusive. So there's a few original trilogy that snuck in there for various reasons. The Bausch or Boosh I got for super cheap. And then down here is my Marvel Legends shelf, uh, which is my newest collection and my smallest, but already it's overflowing. I got Hobgoblin, a lot of Spider-Man, a lot of X-Men. Uh, and I started because I wanted this giant man from Civil War because he kind of is Ultraman-y and superhero-y and kind of looks like a common Rider. So he crossed a lot of those off. And as I said, I'm running out of room because up top here, you can see I have my Dark Hawk and my British Spider-Man and got Green Goblin and Black uh, Suit Spider-Man. Spider-Man and Flash Thompson Spider-Man. And this is my pop collection. I've got three others. I try not to collect pops, but I like Chrome. So I got Chrome Colossus. Got that for free with a t-shirt. That was an exclusive raid that I thought Q might want. Actually, that's Q's BB-8. Luke Skywalker. Hey, I caught Darkhawk. Uh, Luke Skywalker, Old Man Luke again, because I, I collect Luke and Phasma because she's chromey. And then we got a couple posters over here. This is actually like a costume uh, sort of omen. It's not very good quality, but it looks good from a distance. I got a painting of some arcade uh, arcade games atari games that my buddy mike got me but i don't know who painted them because i wasn't there uh some stuff from our wedding that's a statue of animated luke without that it existed it was just the style they did uh this is a print i got a while ago i really liked it's so specific it's a game gear gobbling up batteries with a game boy with one single battery so it's very time specific but i, I like the sort of political commentary on the handheld game wars of you know the late 80s early 90s uh, as well as the art is very nice uh, that is an arcade aid poster that i got from the tron legacy uh, ARG augmented reality game, whatever you want to call it, by participating in that. They only made, I think, a thousand of them, and I got one, and it's pretty awesome. Things are a little bit less organized over here, but you can see I have a collection of random things that didn't fit anywhere else. Some of this is Q's, some of this is mine. We got Hellboy. We got another animated Luke statue. Got an original Tron handheld game that I had as a kid and got again recently, um, a few years ago for Christmas for my brother. I used to play this for hours in the back of the car, which I'm sure my parents loved because it is so loud and annoying. Um, Dead Space figure, you know, just random figures. Over here we have uh, some vinyl uh, Sofubis that we got from Japan of Jungle Fury slash Geki Ranger, Power Ranger, Super Sentai stuff. Some magnets of Ultraman, a bucket of BB-8 we got at a movie theater. Some more uh, vinyl Sofubis. Most of these we got in Japan for like next to nothing, like just a few bucks each. Got a giant Ash that talks, but I'm not going to press that right now. He's from Evil Dead. Over here is, we really cut down on our books and CDs. Uh, but this is what we have left of physical media, with the exception of comics. And uh, you can see there's some DVDs and stuff down there still. Uh, a couple, like, Kakaida, like, imaginative Chogokin. Imaginative, not Chogokin, because that'd, that'd be metal, but, like, they're Gashpon blind boxes or whatever. Uh, and this is mostly Q stuff for Dragon Ball Z. That is a tiki we got from Hawaii on our um, honeymoon. That is an Ultraman I got that is a little bit disappointing, has light and sound, but I don't think it's in Japanese or English. It's some other language, and it's, it's just kind of weird and let me down a little bit. 
Over here, let me turn this on. I have my sonic screwdriver collection from Doctor Who, and this was a to hold thread. Each one of these is like for a little spindle of thread, but I got that at uh, like Joanne's Fabrics or something, and it works really well. Need to get the 12th Doctor, but otherwise that set's pretty good for me. And this is another one of Q's cases. Uh, she's got the San Diego exclusive taco truck uh, Deadpool set. Then she's got, uh, I want to say that Sideshow. <laughs> and then we got a Comic-Con one, and then these are the guys from the set up there. And you know, just Deadpool, Deadpool, Deadpool. And then over here, down a little bit further, another for Loves is the Cosmic Universe. So got a nice Bowen Silver Surfer statue, uh, some Marvel Legends slash, what is it, Premiere? Uh, I forget the other line, but you get in like comic stores, the Disney store, that's the, the Watcher and stuff. Then these are actual Legends up front, and then these are more of like the lead figures. But again, mostly Cosmic, a few other things mixed in Vision. Uh, down here, Q has R2 and C-3PO from... Again, I'm not sure if it's Hot Toys or Sideshow because they brand them differently, but, you know, that's one of those two. And then this is the Sphero BB-8. Down here, a couple Attack on Titan. Uh, I think Figma made those. And then on the bottom is some Star Trek. Now, there are lights, as you can see, but they're just not very bright to light this stuff up, so I, I'm sorry it's so dark. But you got mostly Spock. You got three Spocks, a Tribble, and then a Kirk and a McCoy, and a couple little Kubricks of Uhura, and I think that's Spock again. And that's the living room. Dunzo. Here in the hallway, as many of you may have seen, we have posters. We have these Force FX or Hasbro Signature or whatever brand they go by. They've changed a few times. Lightsabers. Most of these we've had for years. The Kylo Ren is the only new one. Uh, two of these we had at our wedding, which was this green Return of the Jedi Luke for me and this purplish pink uh, Mace Windu for Q. And as you can see in between, we have some art prints from the new movie. Uh, well, the new at the time movie, Force Awakens. A uh, little cat Star Wars, and this is just some more art that Q had up. Here's Capaldi, who's one of my favorite doctors at this point. Tiger and Bunny poster we got from a screening of the movie, which brings us to this little area. Um, up top here, this used to be my DC animated figures. Um, not the newer ones, but the ones back from the 90s. Now this is my Dino Supercharge shelf, or more specifically, my Dino Superdrive shelf, which is all of the Rangers from the season in their American mech pilot suits, powered up even more with all the fancy things. Uh, some of these I got for really cheap, which is why I started collecting them, and the rest I had to pay retail, and then two I had to pay over retail. The most expensive one was Silver here, which, uh, it's annoying, because I got the other so cheap, and then he kind of canceled it out, but I like this set. Uh, and then these are classic Ninja Turtles, they're about six inch tall. They've released a few different versions of these recently, SH Figure Arts and a couple other things, but I'm actually happy with these. Yeah, see, without the door, I should have done that before. Um, here's my Doctor Who collection, I have two shelves of it. I don't have one of every Doctor. I started collecting like my favorites and then I picked up a few more. Here's my Capaldi 12th Doctor. I don't love it. He's got that stupid shirt, but I got it for like four bucks. So, you know, I can't really complain. Uh, and then if you scroll down here, scroll down, I'm just panning down. I got a TARDIS and some more of the Doctors and, you know, Master, an old Master. Uh, this is Starriers, which is by Tomy. And these are kind of related to Zoids and Zords and all that kind of stuff from the 80s. Kind of a little loved set line, whatever, but it's got chrome, it's robots, it's action features, you can pull them apart, put them back together again, and I loved the comic that had art uh, by uh, Bill Sienkiewicz. Uh, I'm not sure if he did the inside and the outside, but like the writing was kind of weird and dark. And here's my G.I. Joe stuff. I have more than this, but this is what I have on display. This is mostly newer anniversary line stuff with a few vintage figures mixed in. I actually have a lot of vintage figures as well, but you can see here's a vintage Doc, and he seems to fit in well with the uh, Lady J and Flint that are the newer ones. Similarly, um, let me look down here. Oh, there's like back there is a vintage Sergeant Slaughter, which lo looks fine next to the others. And down here I have an, a vintage Hiss Tank with newer figures, so I just mix and match. Speaking of which, I have this vintage uh, carded Storm Shadow version 2 when he became a good guy. It's in a little blister pack. It's got a fold on it, so it's not perfect, but it's pretty cool. Uh, and there's a Doctor Who Regeneration David Tennant to Matt Smith figure I got in New York right before I moved. And these are San Diego exclusive figures of Sergeant Slaughter and Jinx, which I never wanted to open, kind of want to open. They're still in the package. I don't know. The bathroom got a little bit of Ninja Turtle branding, got that rug, which we'll probably keep because Star Commander loves it. She slept on it when we first got her. We also have this um, curtain, which I like a lot. But as you can see, Star Commander loves that too, and she's been ripping it up, so we'll probably replace it because of you. This weird cheetah painting, which is actually a print of a painting I've had since I was a little kid. I found it in the garbage and I've hung it everywhere I lived forever. I don't know why. Also have this Firefly print uh, from Adam Hughes that our buddy Jeff gave us, I believe. There's some engagement photos of us and uh, a Groot by Reno Massad. And I forget the artist who did this. I saw it, I think it was on the Retroist posted 
Uh, and it's, I don't know, cool little G.I. Joe cute figure guy peoples. I'm slowing down here. I'm running out of energy. And here's Will Wheaton and Felicia Day painted uh, like they were in an episode of The Guild, uh, which is obviously a little bit um, <laughs> idealistic. And then over here, this is where the art gallery starts. Um, this is a pinup of a comic called Orcs from my buddy Joe Flood. Uh, down here is a Max one half wizard sendaway that I got when I was younger that Q now owns. Uh, and here is a bunch of different art that she has gotten. Uh, some of it might be by Laura Zombie. I'm not sure of the others. This stuff she bought, so I don't really know for sure. Uh, and this is a Zabungaru ink drawing I got from uh, David White from March of Robots. Here's a Vincent from Scott Circland. Here's a Deadpool from Reno Masad. We have a lot of Reno Masad. Here's a Ken from Street Fighter from Reno Masad. Here is a Dungeons and Dragons picture from Alex Robinson. There is a Kaiju battle from J. Allen Ratz. There is a Krillin from Dragon Ball Z from Reno Masad. Here is one of my favorite things. I mean, I like all this, don't get me wrong, but this was hard to get. Uh, a page of, I can't believe it's not the Justice League, which was the reboot of the goofy uh, J.M. DeMatties, or however you say his name, Kevin McGuire book. And this is Kevin McGuire artwork. Uh, this is another one of my favorites. This is, uh, I shouldn't say that because it's all my favorites. I don't, I'm not saying some is better than others, but it's more about the difficulty to acquire. This is a page of a comic, I believe it's called Omni Loop. Um, by my buddy Kevin Schmidt, uh, and I like it because he doesn't do a lot of comics, and he doesn't like the, he didn't want to sell or get rid of any of that art, and he let me have this page, which I appreciated. Uh, up here, it's hard to see; it's faded over time. But Mike Wolfer, who does uh, a lot of horror comics and monster comics, I met him at a con. One of the first professional artists I met. You can see, it's 1990. I was a kid, and he did commissions. I think I paid 20 bucks, maybe, because I wanted two. So I wanted Nightcrawler and Rogue. And I've always had this. This has always been like an inspiration to me. And uh, I thought it was awesome. Moving on to the office. Right here, we have the Ultra Case. You can see there's a Perler Beat Ultraman Q had made for me a while back. Uh, I got Ultraman Leo and uh, Glenfire and Zero. And these are the Ultra Luminate Gash Pump figures that actually light up, but they're a little bit of a pain in the butt to light up. So I'm not gonna do that right now. Uh, and then down here is mostly SH Figure Arts. This is the Ultra Case, but it also has Kikaida. It also has uh, Space Sheriff, uh, and one of them fell over. This is more straight Ultraman. Um, and I like building little dioramas so they look huge as they should. Some of it is actually Ultraman stuff, some of it is not. And then down here I did something similar with Godzilla. I have the Burning Godzilla, and that's a vinyl Jet Jaguar, but he kind of matches the SH Monster Arts. It's difficult to see, but I have a metal tin behind Godzilla, which is a pencil case that has Godzilla and Ultraman on it, signed by both of the original actors. There's Mecha Godzilla getting the brunt of it. This is a, a Ginga, which uh, doesn't really move, but but I love because he lights up and has sound. And I'm a sucker for light and sound as I am for metallic stuff. I'll turn him off for now. I got a timer there that uh, eats batteries like crazy. A couple other things. These are like little wind-up guys I got from Japan. Got this guy from Kimono My House. Uh, you can see I still have some cashews of Ultra 7 I got in Japan that I probably should throw out and never eat. Got this little mini Q transformer from Japan. Um, my buddy Alex got me this little key ring. Behind the door, um, Ultraman mask. Again, I got that from Japan. Here's a Power Lords print when Four Horsemen was bringing back that line, which they kind of gave up on, I guess. They did this cool piece of art that I got a signed print of. My buddy Jeff picked it up for me. This is a Matt Frank Godzilla versus Dragonzord from Power Morph Con, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is my art. I don't normally like to hang my own art, but this is my Green Ranger and Dragonzord because it's signed by Jason David Frank, the Green Ranger, uh, when I met him and I gave him a bunch of free prints and he signed a bunch for me to sell and I kept one for myself uh, and some other random artwork stuff I liked. Uh, and this is uh, Daimajin versus, uh, I forget the name of that monster. I think it's the monster from Godzilla 2000 uh, that I was given as a gift of art, which was nice. Turning directly around, behind there is actually a huge Transformers poster that has, at the time, every Transformer there was uh, in the Dreamwave universe, I believe it was. And I got it signed by Peter, Peter Cullen, the voice of Optimus Prime. I'd love to get it signed by Frank Welker on the other side one day. Uh, anyway, up top here, I have a lot of big figures. Got some Ultraman, some Godzilla, some Super Sentai, some Beetleborgs all kind of mixed together. And then down here is my American Ranger key collection, which has basically every key. There's one or two random ones you got with like underwear or costumes that were the same Rangers, but just with different paint. I don't have those, but I basically have every single one. And down here is my Japanese Ranger key, which I don't even have close to every single one. I would say maybe I have a third of what they have. They're much harder to get, much more expensive, but larger. This is one of my favorites and one of the hardest ones to get. These are some Resha from Tokuger, which is one of my favorite seasons. Uh, and this is an in-space chrome figure that just ended up here. 
Down here we got some more Power Ranger slash Super Sentai stuff. We got a vinyl Zooger, Zoo the World. Uh, this is Ninja. This is not Ninja Steel. It's the same thing, but the, the Japanese version. Most of these are the Japanese versions, uh, like the Deca Robo and stuff. And these are the Legacy figures of In Space. That's one of my favorites because it's TJ. Uh, I got this six-inch Gold Ranger in Mega Mode, which scales with them pretty well, which is cool because I doubt they're ever going to make one. And he's another one of my favorites. Down here, all uh, original, you know, Megazords. I think they're all American, but uh, that one I got from my buddy Ian. The rest I picked up at various stores and stuff. Uh, and then these are all the legacy figures uh, for Mighty Morphin. Down here, it's getting a little dark. A lot of my Chrome stuff. We have Beetleborgs, which is a show I didn't really watch. I don't love, but the figures I love very much. And they're from B-Fighter uh, Japan as well. Back there, I have Silverhawks, which I did watch. And you can see why they're together because of the Chrome. In the way back, you can barely see it, but it is some of the Four Horsemen Power Ranger figure, uh, Power Lords figures I was talking about. Then I have a couple Chrome Turbo figures. I have some Kaku Ranger figures, which is also Alien Rangers or whatever. Uh, in Space slash Mega Ranger. These are metal and rubber. They're kind of weird, but they're metallic and I love them. And then a full set of Mega Force, which I mainly got because they're super cheap. And I do like Robo Knight, even though I'm not a huge fan of that season. And there's some other figures that I haven't opened up All yet. All right. Moving on, we've got my Masters of the Universe, aka He Man collection. As with my Transformers and as with a lot of my collections, it's mainly based on the original earlier incarnations, the one based on the first TV show or whatever, but an updated mold. So these are from Maddie Collector, which is about to become defunct. But but that's Mattel, which is also um, the brand that put out the original toys. Or is it? Yes. So I don't have all of them, but I have most of them. And they're based on the original toys, but with updated sculpts. This is an original Castle Grey Skull. Uh, that's, I think, I always get his name wrong, Granamir, which is just an awesome dragon, which I didn't, if I didn't collect this line at all, I would still want him. And then recently, Super 7 got the license and started putting out more accurate figures like that. See, this is the Trap Jaw, which is based on the original toy. Updated, it's great. That is the Trap Jaw, which is based on the cartoon, so I had to get another one. Similarly, I got uh, Evelyn, and you can see he kind of fell over there, but the, the Skeletor that's animated versus the toy Skeletor, they're all great. Uh, luckily, I won't be buying too many more because they've scaled it back. Uh, and I have a reproduction of a painting of by the artist, I believe Earl Norum did this one. Yeah, Earl Norum. Uh, and it's just some crazy space battle that never happened from Masters of the Universe magazine, which I got when I was a kid. And the thing that's bunk in my hand is some str string raiders sky commanders i had one or two of these as a kid they were kind of a, a failed toy line but they scream 80s to me they're neon they're unnecessary they kind of don't make sense but they make a great display up top here uh, and more art i got uh, this is from my buddy dave major that is an original page from uh, marvel zombies that's an original page of mike waringo flash art that is from my uh, father-in-law did that art and he never did that kind of stuff it was usually more like landscape and flowers but he had this weird devil woman uh, that's an old caricature of me and some of my friends as Ninja Turtles that my buddy Joe Flood did about a million years ago I think Joe Flood did that maybe Ray did it well I think Joe Flood did it if I'm wrong a guy named Ray Yoon did it uh, they're both in the picture so one of them did it I know it wasn't me and Kevin or the other two uh, here's some more Ranger stuff I got recently um, this is awesome it's they're both motorized but this one actually is a motorized transformation this is a display case I've been trying to use and I keep having the same problem as you can see of figures falling over and it being a huge pain in the butt to pick them up so I don't know if I'm gonna continue using this but I have the newer version of the SH figure arts Ultraman figures in here which is different than Ultra Act unfortunately they're smaller and don't scale which is really annoying but they are putting out more aliens so I feel compelled to buy them and there's some gash pond back there uh, and then there's a picture of me and Q and this is from Turbo but uh, it's Power Rangers Turbo but it was just a weird figure that I thought was cool and translucent down here is some Chrome Space Ninja Turtles and a Punk Rock Ninja Turtle with actually a third party Transformers gun this I just got the other day it's one of the Battle Borgs uh, but he is a wolf which is the main reason I wanted him from Power Rangers that is over here are my other pops. This is my real pop collection because I actually open them and have them on my desk. Got Tracer, uh, which is my favorite character from Overwatch. We got 12th Doctor Capaldi uh, with his sonic sunglasses and guitar, which I love. Some fans hate it. I guess that's what separates what kind of fan you are. And then I got this Gwenpool, who I haven't even read her book, but reminds me of my wife. And then I got this Heisei era Godzilla SH Monster Arts. And then this Bio Goji, which has light and sound. Uh, I think it's called Ko Kyo Kyoku or something like that. Um, he's a little bit disappointing, uh, the, the functionality, but whatever. Uh, up here, we have my Nika Ninja Turtle set that I've had for a while, which is my favorite Ninja Turtle set. It's based mostly on the comic, and you can see they all have red headbands. I love it. Um, and it even has the original stand that has 
the lamp post. The later ones, they came out like tubes that had less of these accessories like for the street. Then I have this San Diego Comic-Con exclusive April with the Mousers. And I have the San Diego or the New York exclusive set of Shredder and the Foot Clan, which I just got from my buddy Jeff a couple months ago. And I've had these for about nine years. They had teased these as prototypes as coming out and they never came out and it broke my heart. And they finally came out and he got them for me and I appreciate that. And this is a backdrop from a Loot Crate box, which I just thought was cool. Uh, and that's the early bird special Darth Vader, which I just haven't opened and is sitting there. And what toy collection would be complete if you didn't see a Detolf at some point? And here is one of our Detolfs. Uh, this is right next to my table where I draw and work and game. And uh, you can see I pretty much have Power Ranger Super Sentai on the first two shelves. These are mostly SH figure arts. Um, arguably, these three characters shouldn't be there because they're from Hikunin Sentai Akiba Ranger, which is unofficial, but it's made by the same company and they're some of my favorites, so they stay. Uh, and this collection is a mix of some of my favorites and some that I got on sale, <laughs> basically. Uh, I'm still missing Gokai Red, but I have all the Darns and the other Rangers uh, from that season, which is also known as Super Mega Force. Titanium Ranger is American only, and he did not get an SH figure art, so that's the Legends line, I believe it was called, and he roughly scales, so he goes in there. Down here is a little bit more of a mix because those were all SH figure arts except for him. Uh, I have these metallic ranger movie figures. Uh, again, I'm a sucker for metallic. I got some Jungle Fury figures, which are some of my favorite American ones. Those in RPM, they're, they're tall, they're not over muscular, etc. You can see the more modern ones are kind of squat. Uh, I got that one for free from a contest. And a lot of these I picked up randomly at like yard sales and things. Here's a Tokyo uh, Rokugo, which is uh, from Tokyo. They never made a figure of them, but it was a little model. That's That one there I got from Collection DX as a sample. It's one of the first things I ever got as a sample. Uh, there's the Light Zord, which is the Japanese version, which is far superior to the American version. I love that guy. Got him in Hawaii at a thrift store for a dollar from the, the Ninja Storm mech there. Got the Zeo Gold or King Ranger from O Ranger. Um, has the shininess. He's not too muscular. He's very good. I love him. Got him, I think, for like six bucks, maybe ten bucks in the package in Japan. I keep forgetting to open these doors. Sorry. Uh, this is the Ultraman case. This uh, setup is from. Saint Seiya, I believe it was. I, I just loved it so much that I got it, even though I don't collect Saint Seiya. And I have basically all the Ultra Brothers. This is actually Ultraman Jack, um, not the original Ultraman, but we're faking it, whatever. And then that is Ultraman Powered and Mother of Ultra are both vinyls, which are about six inch, but again, they scale with the original Ultra Act. They won't scale with the new ones, but they scale with the old ones and yada, yada, yada. Down here is the hodgepodge of random robot goodness. We got Biotron and a time travel from, oops, we got Biotron and a time travel from Micronauts. We got the power suit for the Guardians from GoBots, and I've got a few GoBots in there. I've got, I think, Scooter and Turbo and uh, Pathfinder. I need one or two more, a Leader One and a Small Foot, preferably. Diatarn 3, which I didn't know what it was until recently, but I had it as a kid and I wanted to get it back, and I had to do a bunch of research and, and just kind of guesswork to figure out what it was. Uh, and then this is Backsinger. This is a, a knockoff I had as a kid that I've found since, and this is a more modern version of what he's supposed to look like, and some other characters from that series. Uh, which I don't really know, but these were very cheap and cool figures. This is from Go Ranger. I got it at a flea market for a reasonable price recently. Another knockoff I had from Zabunguru, this is Iron, Iron Gear. Uh, I like these knockoffs I had as a kid where I just thought they were knockoff Transformers, and then later I find out that they're part of an actual series. This is a remote control Giant Gorg, which is pretty awesome. I got that from Komo in my house, and this is a little Dugram thing. This is uh, another one where I had a little knockoff like Army Men plastics, but this is what it actually was. Um, so that's kind of cool. Right next to all that, I actually have uh, this is again from Tokyuger. Took you Roku goes uh, weapon, which he's it's like you know traffic conductor, but it's also then becomes a blaster that he puts his drill rush in. I like that. And here's my actual drawing table with the you know obligatory T square. I got my light box, and I have this clamp for for using the phone I'm recording on now to record what I'm drawing. It doesn't work great. It's very shaky. Uh, underneath, I've got like a tackle box I got from the Joe Kubert School full of art supplies. My Copic markers, and in here I have probably a lot of stuff I can get rid of, like files and old art from like 20 years ago that's just still kicking around. I got some poster tubes full, full of stuff I got from Comic-Con probably. Poster from Godzilla Night 3, I just did Godzilla Night 6. Uh, that's a print of art I got from, I don't know, Robo Snicking Tumblr. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's from the book Ready Player One, which I enjoyed. Uh, this is uh, probably the day before I got engaged to Q, we were at Star Trek Experience, which is now closed in Las Vegas, and we got to be on the set, well, a fake set of the Star Trek Enterprise Next Generation. Adam Hughes Tank Girl, uh, Fred Hembeck, Captain Marvel. I actually wanted Quasar, but I didn't know Quasar, so I settled for that. Uh, one of my favorites, Alan Davis Nightcrawler. Uh, that's just a picture of Bioman. Uh, Alan Davis Excalibur poster. Here's the hallway that if you've watched my videos, you know I cannot keep clean. 
and then mostly empty boxes. Just ceiling to floor, both sides, mostly empty boxes with a few comic boxes behind there too. Hoping in the new place I will be able to spread that out more. Oh, did I show you these? Playmates, vintage Ninja Turtles as the Star Trek people. This was a gift from Q a couple years ago. I left them in the package because I like the little goofy things they say, like uh, Chief Medical Officer Raphael, but then it'll say Classic Cowabunga Communicator. Uh, Mutant Medical Class. It's stupid. It's stupid, but I like it. Just the way they try to make it be Ninja Turtle and Star Trek. There's Q's crafty desk. Q-bits. And actually, there is some of my art up because she wanted it up, but I would not have normally put it up myself. Uh, some prints she's gotten from various places of Deadpool and Dragon Ball Z and, and another Deadpool. And some crafty stuff. Some Zuoja figures. Fully Kali. Godzilla she got from Japan. Uh, Maneki Neko. The waving cat she likes. Um, anything cat, obviously. Uh, Zootopia. Um, Yokai Watch and on and on and over here uh the light isn't on but this is her dragon ball z case um which all three were customized but this one was the best because she even put like what goku has on the back of his uh suit which i guess is like i don't know something about the turtle sage i don't know how to read it uh she's got her dragon ball pops here a few more over there and then sh figure art dragon ball z filling the case and goku had an accident there's some baymax this is a little case i got at a flea market for her to hold all her little naruto chibis and some gundam and some Kamen Rider and Ultraman and some more Dragon Ball and another Deadpool print and some original Ron Lim art of Thanos and there's a Silver Surfer back there and these are, I think they're called Q-Pops uh, and they, they come through with some loot crates which is how we ended up with some and she started collecting those she started to take some things away, this is the Naruto statues, there was a few missing here um, that one uh, I got her as a wedding gift actually, uh, back before Shibudin came out and then down here, some more Dragon Ball. We got more kind of statue versions and the pod that the androids come out of going down further. And again, her case has already started being pulled apart. These are some Gundam models she's built and all the way at the bottom, some World of Warcraft figures that you can barely see. Up top, got a couple of robot stickers, a uh, Dr. Mew, which is at the time was all the doctors as cats, aristocrats plate I had gotten her. Uh, there's a large Galactus we got from San Diego Comic-Con a couple years ago. Uh, and then that whole case and that whole case, I think they were like jewelry cases or, or whatever, but she found that they work perfectly for these, I think they're called Petite Chara, or if not something similar to their chibis basically, of Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z. Can you tell which are her favorites? Uh, some Mega Man helmets that she got from Comic-Con a couple years back. Uh, and that's a X-Aid Kamen Rider figure. Uh, and then down there you can see a little bit of Star Wars stuff and a couple other random things. And a, She's playing Overwatch, and uh, there's some art, and this was a from when Naruto, the manga, ended. They had this, uh, and I got that uh, at Comic-Con for her, and that's uh, an original production drawing from the original Naruto, uh, another piece of my art that I did of her a million years ago, and uh, that's it for the office. Oh, there's a, a vintage flip-head Green Ranger that I got at a toy show for next to nothing, so I thought that was pretty cool. All right, last room. From the first Comic-Con, well, San Diego anyway, I went to, I got that poster. Revenge of the Jedi, which was the original title of Return of the Jedi, that got changed. But this poster is actually the action figures that they were releasing that had the Revenge of the Jedi logo if you found them. And this is where most of my Star Wars stuff is. Um, I mainly collect the original three movies, but I have a bunch from the other stuff too, so it's a little misleading. Uh, I also have a sub-collection of Luke Skywalker. I try to collect... All the Luke Skywalker figures, I have not succeeded. I don't run around doing it. But if I see one and it's relatively cheap, I get it. These are all reproductions. Not reproductions. These are all anniversary lines or retro lines. So they've come out in the last couple of years. They look like the old figure packaging, which I like a lot. With the exception of this Jedi Luke, which I got from my mom for Christmas a few years back. This is actually the only vintage carded Star Wars figure I have. Um, and then you can see I have the the new Millennium Falcon and the new AT-AT, new being a relative term again, 10 years ago, but I love that they're so big, they make me feel, they're as big as you imagine them being, like when you were a kid. Like if you get a vintage Millennium Falcon, it seems small now as an adult. Uh, I found this in the trash and cleaned it up, and I got some more stuff back here. These are the Disney Astromechs I got from when I went to Disneyland last year. These are the Ralph McQuarrie concept ones. That's the GameStop exclusive. This Luke figure I don't even really like, but it's a Luke figure, like the sculpt and the, it's just not a great figure out of the package, but since they had the vintage packaging, I got it for my wall. I like it there. And as you can see, there's, there's some more Lukes over here. Panning this way, there is Disney Infinity, which is a game which I don't play, I don't even own, but it's going out of business and I got all of the Star Wars figures for very cheap. And if you look, they're just sort of like cartoonified animated versions of Rebels, uh, of Clone Wars, of Force Awakens and original series too. And originally, again, this is, I was gonna get just get Luke, but they were so cheap I ended up getting all of them. Uh, I might open them up one day, but not right now. 
Over here, Ultraman Spark Dolls. These are reasonably cheap, like five bucks each-ish. If you, that's what they retail. Sometimes they go for more. And they all have a gimmick where on the bottom of their feet, they have that. And you can plug it with a henshin device from Ginga. There's a second one. Not all these work because this is season one and season two has some of the rest. And then down here, I have a bunch of the more modern figures, Genebot, and uh, they, they, these two change into ships. This one's got cloth. It's weird. I think it's, I think it's Cosmos. I'm not sure, though. Uh, and it's called like costume series or something like that, but it, it's odd. And then down, oh, I have the Cherno Alpha 18 inch NECA from Pacific Rim. Uh, up here, I have the Gypsy Danger. There was also a Striker Eureka and a damaged Gypsy Danger, but these are the only two I have. That is the legendary Godzilla, which is even taller and has that huge tail. That is the Maddie Collector original Voltron, but redone. These are the figures that came with it, and these lions are from Legendary Defender, the current Netflix series, which is very good. Here's some little chibi Godzillas. There's a Mazer cannon my buddy Ian got for me. And then going down here, I kind of skipped another little pocket of Star Wars just that didn't fit anywhere else. I actually have a frame from Empire Strikes Back with Luke in it that I got, I believe, from my mom years ago. Um, I have some comics here. These are comics that I need to read. I'm always behind my comics. Comics, 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 comics. All I haven't read. And these are some Walmart exclusive Black Series 3.35 that usually go for about 10 bucks each, but I've been finding them for five bucks each, so I've been stocking up on all the ones that I didn't get. There's original VHS giant cases of G.I. Joe. I also have Transformers and Robotech. Actually, if I move this, you can see the Robotech. Uh, down here, I have uh, Diaclone Daibaturu. I also have this for my shoes. Uh, and this other Victory that I haven't opened yet. That is an awesome interactive R2-D2. Well, he's got an R2-D2 hat <laughs> from Disneyland that uh, I got years ago from Q. Underneath this setup, I forgot to show you, I have, these are the Transformers VHS boxes I was telling you about, as well as some other random VHS that I've kept because I couldn't find them streaming or on DVD or anywhere else easily. Uh, and then some down here are like home movies and things. But mostly this is art books, either books about artists or books about technique or Calvin and Hobbes books, but all basically art related in some way. Uh, except here, a bunch of comics that I still need to read. And there's Star Commander's Paws, hi. All right, moving, so you see here's the bed, that's the door, and then rotating this way, there's the Voltron, and then we have two more Detolves. This one is mainly Transformers and mainly Masterpiece. The other one is like the more retail stuff. So I have Starscream, I have the original Megatron, which I never loved, but I mean, I like him that he's the original Megatron, but he's just never been as good as the Prime. Soundwave's great. All the rest of these are great. That Prowl is a J Japanese banal tech, which was their version of Alternators, but I've since gotten the Masterpiece Prowl, so I'll probably get rid of him eventually. This guy and his brother down here, are from Gao Gai Gar, I believe it is, which is sort of a spiritual successor to Transformers that I haven't watched, but they look just like Transformers. They fit right in, and I, I got those, and I really like them. Bumblebee and Spike down here. Now, this is the original Masterpiece Optimus Prime. That might be the Hasbro version, not the Takara. It doesn't matter. The newer one is smaller, and they're all kind of going in a smaller scale. So he's kind of a throwback, as is the Megatron, but I still think he's a great figure. I got this white Ultra Magnus, which is the original one, which doesn't have the armor, which is kind of a bummer. Grimlock, he's great. Um, those two figures, the Skids and Blue Streak or Silver Streak, depending on the name, are alternators, which was an older, well, a new line, but old now, like 10 years old or so, where they were all based on real cars was the whole gimmick. Uh, and before the Masterpiece line came along, they were the best Transformers there were. That's the Masterpiece tracks. Down here is uh, Solo Chogokin, uh, Solo Robot Spirits, or, oh man, I forget, Dynamite Entertainment, I think that one is. So I have the original Voltron, which is from Toynami. I have Big O, which is Solo Chogokin. Got this little Hello Kitty Chogokin, that's actually Q's. Uh, I think that's Dugram. Got Steel Jig. Both Jig and Guy King are ma uh, magnetic. So all their pieces come apart and they come with lots of different effect parts and stuff. Uh, there's Zabungaru, uh, the Blue Gale, uh, Mazinger, which got me started. I have like a few Mazinger figures now, but that was, I think it was Shin Mazinger. My brother got me. That was the first one. Down here is Robotech. Got these little chibi guys. That's technically Battletech, Robotech. It's kind of the same thing in America. Uh, I got this um, for a good price from my buddy Jeff. Uh, and then those two I've had for a while, those Veritex, they're a little bit dusty. And the hover tank I got used um, for a pretty good price. Let's go for a lot now. That was from the second season, I think, or the third season. I get them mixed up. Back up at the top of the other Detolf, and you can see I have these lights that change color. Actually, once again, I'll open the door. Ha ha. I have Masterpiece 
Hot Rodimus, which is Rodimus, I think it's called Hot Rodimus, which is Rodimus Prime and Hot Rod in one, where you could change them between the two forms. He noticed his arm was missing. It just fell off one day. I never even fully transformed him because I heard the horror stories. He cost me a lot, but he's one of my favorite characters of all times. And it breaks my heart and I hate thinking about it. Uh, Combatler V, um, these are mostly Sola Chogaki, and that's a masterpiece. Uh, going back, to, yeah, here's, so here's Great Mazinger, and there is Mazen Kaiser, uh, Revolve Tech Gurren Lagan, uh, Battle Fever Robo from Old Sentai. Scrolling down, scrolling down, back to Star Wars. Again, mostly original trilogy, uh, but I also like to collect bounty hunters. So I have bounty hunters that weren't just original trilogy. Some of these, like that Grievous figure is great. Like I'm not a huge fan of the character in the movies, but it's a great figure. And then I have this Darth Vader, which is based on his video game where he got all messed up. And then I have Jedis, and I have Qui-Gon, and I have Obi-Wan, and I have Anakin, who, you know, they're not my favorites, but the figures are good. And then I have Rey in there in her Jedi outfit and stuff. So I, this is like my Jedi Sith outfit. That's my bounty hunter uh, area. I said outfit. And similarly down here, this is all my Imperial troops. I have a lot of clone troopers, stormtroopers, Imperial officers, evil droids, <laughs> etc. And then, oh, and actually I have this. I have two of these. Uh, it was like Galactic Stands or something. It was a Kickstarter I funded, and I got a few of them, which it's cool, but I should have got more because, as you can see down here, too, I just have the one, and it's kind of not so great. Um, down here is my Rebel Pilots and Droids. That's the themes down here, and that's when I built at uh, Disney. Uh, that's when I built at Disney, which is supposed to be Ahsoka's. Um, I think that's when I, I built a lot of these at Disney, actually, looking at it. Um, that was a Build-A-Droid that I just put together from random pieces that came with other figures. That was the preview from Phantom Menace. That was one of the two or three preview figures they had, et cetera, et cetera. Next to these cases, we can see Q has a bunch of her stuffed animals up here. And she's got standard stuff like, uh, you know, cute little... Well, actually, most of this is not standard. I was going to say, she's got most cute, standard stuff like cute little cats and dogs and stuff, which she does. But it's like, oh, this is the cat bus from my neighbor Totoro. I just knocked some things over. Sorry about that. She's got an Ewok. She's got Adventure Time. She's got... Um, I forget what his name is, the cat from Dragon Ball Z. She's got Dexter, you know, so <laughs> there is just some random cute stuffed animals, but a lot of it is specifically nerdy referenced. Uh, stuffed common Rider I got at G-Fest last year. I was pretty happy to find for her. She's a common Rider pal. And then, uh, yeah, just some more stuff stuff. That Flash is actually mine. I've had him for a million years. I think he might, is he a beanie baby? I don't even know. No, maybe, what does he say? He's a bean bag. Uh, and then more little cute little things over here and then her makeup and all that kind of area uh, And then there's a Boba Fett potato head and then uh, that's a San Diego exclusive from I think last year or the year before and some bombshells and some invader Zim and uh, That's a tank girl. I sketched that she wanted and there's a, another Maneki Neko and some pictures of friends and some tins of Adventure Time and doo doo and we're coming to the end and there's some pins on the things and uh, yeah. A little more stuffed animals over here as well as a Sailor Moon print. And I think that does it for the bedroom and for the whole house. None of that exists. Well, that's not true. The toys still exist. Those displays as they existed in time, that's a little time capsule of my collection, my wife's collection, our art, our posters, our toys, and the way our house was set up for, I don't know, seven years or so, and now we're moving on to new things. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you got some tips on how you can display your own things. Maybe you saw some collections that you said, oh, I want to collect those things. Maybe you, uh, you know, want to make your own. If you do, awesome. Share it with me. Share it with everyone. Share with the world your love for toys and all its glorious splendor. But for now, I'm Gazbot, and I'm going to go uh, try to hang up some more toys, I guess. Okay, bye. This is a test of the microphone. I can zoom way in and you can still hear me just fine. I'm gonna snap over here and see if that makes a difference. Okay, test over. I left it in the package because I, I like the little goofy things they say. Hey, look, it's me. And then over here, uh, <laughs> a Will Wheaton and um, her from that show. What? Um, what's his face? You know, the man, because you have to pierce the sky. Pierce that sky. What's his name? This one's got cloth. It's weird. It's. Blah. <laughs>